During World War I, a man developed a new method of enemy suppression. Then his wife showed him just how much the world condemned that. Klara Imowa was born in 1870 in Poland. Her family was what they called middle-class wealthy, because dad made a decent living at farming. He held a PhD in chemistry, but for various reasons couldn't work in that field. Still, he made sure that his sons and daughters got a great education. Alas, society did not agree with that last bit. So early on, his daughters had the best private tutors money could buy. Until later, when they were able to attend a private school, where they were encouraged to pursue a more traditional role. You know, bread baking and baby making. Clara did not agree with that last bit. In 1890, Clara's mom passed, and she and her dad moved to Breslau, where Clara began studying at a teacher's seminary. Oh no, she didn't want to teach. There just weren't many other options for a woman even if that woman was brilliant. When she wasn't studying, Clara did all the things that young women were expected to do, like going to dances, which was fun, to meet a potential husband, which is less fun. But meet boys she did. Most significantly, this guy called Fritz Haber. Oh, <laughs> she was a hot potato, and he didn't waste any time proposing. She told him where he could stick that proposal. She wanted an education and independence, not a fucking husband. So back at the seminary, the principal, Miss Niddle, wasn't blind. She gave Clara a book called Conversations in Chemistry, which Clara devoured. She found her passion in those pages. Her dad was thrilled, to say the least, and got her more tutors. She worked as a governess for a while, but that just proved to her how much she did not want that life. Like I said, she wanted that degree. But see, at that time, society was fucking dumb. Women could only attend university lectures as guests. But Clara kept studying, fought for permission to take the entrance exam for the PhD program in chemistry at the University of Breslau. Finally, she got that permission. And in 1898, she became the first woman to pass that exam. She got in. So there was this professor, Richard Abegg. He's considered a pioneer in chemistry. He was appointed her PhD supervisor and became her closest friend and confidant. And you know what? He didn't care that she didn't have a peener. What he did care about was her brilliant mind. He made her one of his lab assistants. She was, quote, reliable, conscientious, and competent, doing research that mattered at the time. Then, on December 22nd, 1900, Clara successfully defended her thesis, making her the first woman in Germany to be awarded a doctorate in chemistry from a German institution. Allegedly, she made herself a promise to stay true to herself and the dignity of science. Now, if you were wondering, her dissertation focused on electron affinity. According to Bygis.com, electron affinity is specific to gaseous forms of elements. As I understood it, and I am not a chemist, shit happens on an atomic level. Energy gets released, like when an electron is added to a neutral chlorine atom, and it becomes chloride. To this day, her thesis is quoted. So she and Abegg published a paper under both their names. Considering the time period, it's almost shocking he put her name on it. A woman's name on a paper generally meant that it wasn't taken seriously, which means it's still more significant that she published other papers in only her name. In April 1901, Clara was the only woman attending the annual conference of the German Electrochemical Society in Freiburg. And of course, she met a guy. Society must have been so proud. Well, it was Fritz again. Turns out he was still interested in her. Oh, and he was interested in chemistry, too. He threw her another proposal, and she caved to society. They were married not long after. At first, it was great. He even gave her credit for collaborating on his book. But he never contradicted anyone that gave him credit for her shit. For a time, Clara continued teaching and lecturing. Only women, of course. But people tried to say that Fritz wrote her speeches, too. You know, he had a peener. Obviously, that meant he was the brains of the operation. Never mind that she was a literal fucking doctor of chemistry. Anyway, Fritz was not nearly as progressive as Clara's father. Her entire existence shrank. Her research and lectures became less part of her life. Instead, she was running experiments to determine which cleaning products worked the best to remove another woman's lipstick from a man's collar. Then, in 1902, their only child, Hermann, was born. He was sickly and needed 24-7 care. Clara was mom before scientist and completely abandoned her research. Well, except for the collars. 
she became still more isolated, moving still farther away from what she'd wanted since she was a girl. Her hope all but disappeared. Fritz was man before dad. So he kept researching, kept traveling and giving lectures, and bringing home more lipstick collars. You know, he was helping Clara with her research. Later, in 1909, Clara wrote to Abeg, saying, What Fritz has gained in these last eight years, I have lost. And what's left of me fills me with the deepest dissatisfaction. Can you even imagine? So Fritz's research initially centered on developing means of increased crop production through chemical means. Lots of people were concerned about food scarcity. So Fritz figured out how to turn nitrogen gas in the atmosphere into a compound that was used in fertilizer. I know, awesome, right? In 1911, he was appointed director of the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Chemistry. And after World War I began in 1914, Germany approached him because gas is quieter than artillery. And Fritz got to work against his wife's wishes because when the fuck did he ever consider those? In April of 1915, Fritz was on the front lines of the Second Battle of Ypres. He was in his brand spanking new German uniform. See, he had developed a new kind of gas and determined that the wind was the best way to deliver it. So at sunrise on April 22nd, 1915, the wind was blowing toward an estimated 10,000 Allied troops. Effective gas masks weren't developed until later that year, just so as you know. German soldiers opened about 6,000 canisters and released 170 metric tons of chlorine gas. Of the 7,000 casualties that day, more than 5,000 did not survive. According to one who did, quote, the next thing you heard was this sizzling. You could hear the damn stuff. Then you saw it. Greenish yellow. It wasn't very high. You immediately began to choke. Then word came. Whatever you do, do not go down. Turns out chlorine gas is heavy. It smells like bleach. Likes to hang out low, like at the bottom of trenches. Go down in that, you ain't getting up. Some troops panicked. Why the fuck wouldn't you? They ran for water to ease the burning in their throats. But the hydrogen in the water reacted with the chlorine gas, created a new compound that flooded the soldiers' throats and lungs in agony. It was hydrochloric acid. The Germans were officially the first to successfully use poison gas in battle. Fritz has since been called the father of chemical warfare. Now remember, Clara had sworn never to pervert science. She accused Fritz of doing just that. She'd given up science because she created life. He'd accepted a promotion from Germany for destroying life. On May 2nd, 1915, there was a party at their home to celebrate Fritz's success in Ypres. Clara decided to take a solitary stroll in their garden. Well, she wasn't completely alone. She'd brought along Fritz's military-issued pistol. No one heard her test fire. Only her 13-year-old son heard the second shot. He found his mother in the garden, no longer breathing. Fritz left the next morning to do something for the Germans. Kind of cold, yeah? You know, leaving his son without his mother. Fritz never talked about what happened to Clara. Neither of them left papers or diaries. Their son also unalived himself, so there are no first-hand accounts. Today, Clara is held up as kind of a martyr, a symbol of feminism and pacifism, because she stayed true to her self-made promise. However, I really think we need to consider something else. In recent years, analysis between Clara and Abeg has been studied and is showing a different picture, that it wasn't Fritz's science, but instead that he was a lying, cheating misogynist. But that feels incomplete to me. This next bit is just my hypothesis. But I'm inviting you to think a different way. I just keep wondering. She was a brilliant chemist. She had studied elements' gaseous forms. She and Fritz had collaborated. Did Fritz, all or in part, use her work to develop his gas? Or did she actively contribute? Clara's last name literally translates to always true. So was she true to herself? Her science? Her husband? Germany? Or was she the victim of a society that insisted she forget her own intelligence simply because she didn't have a peener? Was she a martyr, a scorned woman, or was it crushing guilt over having contributed to such a vicious weapon, regardless if it's what she intended?